Lesson 11.4 and 11.5, the Pythagorean Theorem and the Distance Formula, really the same thing, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. First things first, I want you to take a minute, pause the tape, and uh, pause the recording, grab a ruler. What I want you to do is find any rectangle or square, and do your best. could be your desk, could be a box, could be anything, could be the seat of a chair doesn't really matter. And measure the side, measure the other side, and then measure the diagonal. I want you to square this value, square this value, square this value. Add these two together and see what you get. So pause the tape, give it a try. Most of you probably wimped out. That's okay, but if, for example, you found that this was 5 inches long, this was 12 inches long, and this was 13 inches long, you would have found out that 5 squared plus 12 squared is 25 plus 144 is 169, which is exactly what 13 squared is. This is the Pythagorean Theorem. It's the most famous theorem in math, and it's also the most important, as far as I'm concerned. It lies at the intersection of algebra, geometry, and even trigonometry. So you want to get this down, you want to get good at it, you want to know how to apply it. I'm going to give you a lot of practice on this. Once you get good at it, you can almost do it in your head. It states, in a right triangle, meaning it has a 90 degree angle, If one of the legs called A and another one of the legs called B are squared and added together, you will get the hypotenuse squared. How do you know which one's the hypotenuse? It is the one that's across from the right angle. The legs are the other two. They touch the right angle here and here. They're touching it. So that's it. A lot of times we just go with ABC. We don't even call it leg and hypotenuse. And we crank them out. There's really nothing special here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You'll always get two and you have to find the third. Special triangles will be a little different. We'll get to that eventually. And you have to learn how to take square roots, which we've already done. And then reduce them. Make sure they all work. Easy to check. You should never get it wrong. So, here's an example. If this side is three and this side is four, what's C? Well, you go three squared plus four squared equals c squared, 9 plus 16 equals c squared, 25 equals c squared, square root of both sides, c equals 5. Since it represents an actual length, you do not need the plus minus. And that's it. Notice the 3, 4, 5 works. What does that mean works? There's no radical in there. There's no incomplete number. If I tried it with almost anything else, it's not going to work. These are called triples. We need to get a poster together on the wall. These are numbers that work as whole numbers, as integers. 3, 4, 5. 5, 12, 13 works. 8, 15, 17 works. 7, 24, 25 works. A whole host of them work. It's a lot of triples at work. So, helps if you have them memorized, but if you don't, do what I just did, and it's no big deal. Again, we'll get a poster on the wall. Helps out a lot in class. People look up all the time and see it. Saves them some time. Now, let's go backwards. 
I give you a triangle. I say one side is 10, the other side is 24, the other side is 26. I say, is it a right triangle? And you say, how the heck would I know? I say, well, see if it obeys the Pythagorean theorem. If it is, it's a right triangle, and I call it going backwards. If you know something's a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you know it's a right triangle. So 10 squared plus 24 squared, does that equal 26 squared? The answer is yes. So you would say, yes, it's a right triangle. Called the converse in logic. If A, then B. If B, then A. Going just forwards and backwards. You get all that in geometry. Giving you a lot to absorb here, so let's keep going. How far is it? between the point negative 3, 5 and 3, negative 3. Whatever you draw in your points, make sure you label them. So here's the point 3, negative 3. Here's the point negative 3, comma 5. What is this distance? How the heck would we find out? Well, if we had a right triangle, we could just use Pythagorean theorem. And if we had some graph paper, we'd just count. In this case is going to be a little tricky. I think we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we got a triangle here. Six, and then on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. We'll call this D for distance now because we're asking for the distance, and then we just blast it out. Six squared plus eight squared equals D squared. Thirty-six plus forty-eight equals D squared. Pardon me. 64, 100 equals d squared, d equals 10. And that's called the distance formula. Now, a lot of people don't want to be smart and intelligent. They actually look at that as a right triangle. They want to do what we call plug and chug and just go through their happy little lives. That's fine. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But I want to point out, 6, 8, 10 is a triple. No radicals. How come I didn't list it on the previous page? And the answer is I did. I gave you 3, 4, 5. How do you get from 3 to 6? Times 2. 4 to 8. Times 2. 5 to 10. Times 2. So multiples of all the triples work also. Divisors of all the triples work. I could take 3, 4, 5 and divide by 1 third. So 1, 4 third, and 5 thirds will all work. That's a triple too. So be aware because these pop up all the time. And we disguise them as best we can, us evil math teachers, to try and mess with you. So we divide them by 3 so you don't recognize them as easily. That's what we do. Promised you I'd give you the formula. Here it is. If you look at that and square both sides, you get d squared equals x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And there it is. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is just how you find a and b. So that's how we used it in the previous question. Try it again with 7, negative 3. 
and 4.9. And here's what most people do. They label them x1, x2, y1, y2. And they say d equals big monster square root 4 minus 7 squared plus 9 watch your negatives minus negative 3 squared d equals d equals square root of 9 plus 144 D equals square root of 153. Done, yes? No. Why not? Because we can reduce it. How did I know that 9 went into it? Because 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 9. Popped it in the calculator, found out it's reducible. Next question on everybody's lips, most likely Lexi, do I have to reduce it? Yes, you have to reduce it. That's why we did all that at the beginning of the unit. And that's your answer. You're going to have a lot of problems with this. Uh, not difficulties, you're going to have a lot of math problems with this. So make sure you do them all, and I'm here to help. Good luck.